In the last few videos, we've talked about React Router. We're going to keep doing that this time and next. Today, or in this video, we are going to talk about uh, parameters, route parameters. How can you pass values along paths for use in React applications? And so that's what we're going to do in this video and in the next. So I have already taken the liberty of creating a React app. It has had no modifications whatsoever so far. I haven't installed React Router yet, so npm install React Router DOM. In this video, my goal is to show you the concepts, show you the, uh, the, the, the nuts and bolts of just how to make it work. But uh, some people will have issues, uh, maybe most people will have issues going from how does it work to what can you actually use it for? So in the next video, we'll actually uh, build something that's a little bit more useful than what we're doing here. Right now, the goal is to just show you the basic technique. Next time, we'll make a longer video of a more practical example if you want that. And so I've now installed React Router. All right, so we should be good to go now. All right, uh, let's see. I'm gonna rearrange my windows and then I'll be ready to go. Okay, so let's get rid of the bits of the application that we don't want, which is most of this stuff in the middle. There we go. Just like we did in the last few videos, let's import. Uh, we can use hash router or browser router. I'll start with hash router. These are our three main components. Um, let's see, this will be from React Router DOM. Okay. So let's wrap this in router. All right. Wrap that in the router. And now hopefully the sound's turned off. Uh, wrap that in the router. Let's see, what, do we, what else do we need? Uh, I want some routes. I'm going to say the path for the first route will be the root. And it's going to use a component which we will call, because we're boring, home component. No, let's be less boring, the index component. And another route where we're going to call this detail. And we are going to define a parameter, which means there's a piece of data we're going to pass along, and it's going to vary per link. And we're going to pass along an ID. And so with that one, we're going to say component uh, detail component, like so. So now if we go here, um, React is going to be rather angry because I don't actually have an index or a detail component. So let's go ahead and create those. I'll just inline them up here. Um, you can actually put them at the bottom wherever you want to. In this case, this will be the fastest thing instead of making a separate file or whatnot. So uh, let's do these as functional components. So function uh, index component. I'm going to return. And I want to use the link. I want to uh, just create a few links here. I'm going to say to detail slash six. Create a few more. Let's see, 10. 10, we're working on a site with various 
IDs on items that maybe we'll look up in a detail page, which is exactly what we're going to do in the next video, except this is just the basic technique. Okay, so I have a bunch of links here and I have an index component. So let's get the detail component. put it in place. Okay, so my links are kind of uh, squished together here. I guess that's not ideal. So let's just put some divs. I guess we could have just styled these as block level elements or put some margin. Any of those things would have not worked, but here we go. So we have 6, 10, 90, and 12. So if we click on the link for this, uh, we will see here's the detail component. Now, going back to our previous videos, uh, this is the index component, and these links are still showing up, and that's because the route slash detail slash 6, well, this route matches on just the slash, so it works fine for this one, as does this. So essentially we're getting two components. You can, in this case, go this, go, go this route and just say exact, which means it'll only match there, or you can take the switch, and this will always return or show the first one that's matched which would mean we would need to put this one last. It, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really matter. Whatever's working for you. Uh, except it does matter in that uh, if you don't bring in the switch component, things explode. So let's actually bring that in from React Router. Ah, so now it works. So we go to the root, we just see these links, and then we go to the detail component. Okay, so. Uh, the basic routing works. We are going to various, uh, you know, this to various links, all of which point to this detail with this value. Now, what's going to be normal in web development whenever you have these values that are passed on the routes is usually we use these to do things. Like, for example, we might look for the detail for an ID 10 or an ID 90, and maybe make an AJAX call to the server to get all that data. This time, we're not going to go quite that far. That's next video. This video, let's just talk about how we would get the value. Well, we've specified that it is a value by doing this colon ID. So this is how we set up in the routing that this needs to be a parameter. Now let's use it. I'm going to go into here and I want to console log the props. What I've done is I've console logged the string called props without actually console logging the props themselves. There they are. Okay. So here we are. This is what's coming in. And this match and this stuff is coming in from React Router. So I actually want to specifically look at match. And in match, there's this object called params and ID. So if you look at this value right here in params, this value called ID and 10, that comes from here. I specified that the route had a value called ID, and so therefore, that's the name of that value right here. If we go here and say, um, change this to RAM value, We change that to param value. We go back here. If we look in the match params, we can see now it's called param value, but this link hasn't changed. All this does right here is give it the name of the value to put in that params object. So what that means is we can access out of here by going to props.match.params dot ID to get the value. And so detail component H1 
and we could say you selected ID this dot props dot match dot params dot ID I think oh looks what looks like I did something wrong and that is because this is a pure functional component uh, there is no this in this case um, we're actually just using props that are being passed in so oops I actually think I did this on a previous video sometimes we get stuck making some of the same mistakes okay so you selected ID 10 great I'm gonna go back and do 90 I now selected 90 12 wait a minute Oh, looks like I have a copy paste error. You get bonus points if you noticed that when I was making the video earlier. Ah, and see now it's 12. And now it's 6. Okay, that's the basic idea of params. You can, if you want to, have multiple params. It totally would work fine. Like something else. And you would just build, need to build a URL with all four of these pieces with the path. And um, this second piece would become the ID. And this fourth piece would become uh, something called thing in the params object. So that's, that's the basic idea behind parameters. And so you pass data along, usually for looking up or finding other data later. Uh, that's generally what these are going to be used for. If you're not exactly clear how that would work then watch the next video because in the next video I'm going to uh, create a small API using Express and get that running on my local machine and then I'm going to use this React app that we started here to connect to that to that API uh, build a real life um, or lifelike example of how to use routing and routing values against an API. So that's the next video.